Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of Corsetro. So today we're gonna hop into the world of Angular. Angular 7 just released. I released a, a crash course just a couple days ago. And I there's also a new service called IP API that uh, launched recently, I believe. I mean, looking at the Alexa ranking, um, I, th I mean, it's one that I just saw come up on one of the news sites and uh, they provide you with an API that will provide you with all this data coming um, from a client. You can also, there's other endpoints that will allow you to look up uh, different addresses. And so uh, there's also a pricing plan. It's free for up to 30,000 requests a month or up to a thousand per day. So this is what we're gonna use in combination with uh, the Google Maps integration for Angular, all right? So this is, uh, if I just refresh the app right here, this is showing, you know, exactly where I'm coming from. And also, if I take a look at the console, we'll see that it's returning an object with all of this information right here. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to integrate all this stuff and get it set up and working within an Angular 7 project. All right, so for today's question, which database do you like the most? MySQL, MongoDB, there's a bunch of others out there. Let me know in the comments and I'll also let you know my experience as such in the first pinned comment as well. If you enjoy this, I make sure you subscribe and tick the bell icon notification so you get notified every time instantly when I upload a new video. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make sure you hop into your uh, your code folder, wherever you store your projects in your command line or console. And then we're gonna use the Angular command line interface, the CLI, to install the new project. I'm gonna assume you already know what that is and you already have it installed. All right, so we're gonna type in ng new and we'll name this, I just call, I don't know, maps. I'm not very original. Now, of course, the new CLI is going to prompt us to ask us if we want routing for this simple demonstration. I have no purpose or need for that. So I'm going to hit N and then just basic CSS. Uh, we're not even touching any CSS, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to let this install and then we'll, we'll come back. All right, it's done. Let's go ahead and CD into maps here. And then instead of running ng serve to get the dev server up and running, I first want to install uh, the Angular Google Maps package. So we're going to use npm install. We're going to save this as a dev dependency. And then it's at agm for Angular Google Maps forward slash core. All right, so we'll let that install as well. All right, now that that's done, I also, because I do anticipate using a service, let's just generate that real quickly. So ng, uh, we're gonna generate a service called, we'll just call it maps. And this is where we're gonna stick the HTTP client library in order to communicate with the API to grab the data. All right, so I'm gonna type in code period to launch up the code editor. And here we are in Visual Studio Code. So you can hit control plus just to get us a little bit bigger and larger for all of you to see. All right, so now the next step, since we did install uh, a package here, we have to get it added to our source and let's see here, app in our app module TS file. All right, so basically we're gonna import two different things. First, we need the HTTP client library uh, ready to, to go as well as that API. So uh, for the HTTP client module. This is the line that we need right here. And then also we add it to the imports. And then next for the Angular Google Maps library, we have to import AGM core module from AGM core right there. All right, and then this has uh, a configuration setting all right, so uh, I'm just going to paste this in right here. Now the API key, this is where you're gonna need to grab an API key from the Google Developer Console. So let me just show you what I mean when I'm talking about that. All right, so if I come up here, this is uh, the API, the IP API that we're gonna be using, but I'm gonna get over here real quick. And when you log into the uh, the, the Google developer platform, or, or I forget exactly what it's called, but it's this section right here, um, we can create a new project. All right, so I'm just gonna call this Angular Maps Demo. All right, uh, the billing account, you're gonna have to set that up. I'm just gonna use one I set up earlier. Um, it doesn't, it's not gonna charge you uh, as long as you stay under 
your certain amount of uh, requests for Google Maps specifically. And I mean, this is this whole setup process. Uh, it's just so you can have that visual Google Maps thing there and ready to go in your app. Uh, I'm going to hit create. Now it's going to create this just a little bit um, right here. You can see I already created one from two hours ago. Um, it only takes about a few more seconds. There we go. So I'm going to click on it and I uh, let's see here. I'm going to click on this. All right. And then I'm going to come out to, let's see here, this section API, we're going to go to credentials. So I'm going to create credentials an API key. And this is the API key that we're going to be adding to that uh, configuration step. If want, let me find it here. All right, right here and save it. Now we have to go back though. We're not done yet because now we have to go to dashboard. We got to have to enable APIs and services. We're going to just type in Google maps and we want to enable uh, maps, JavaScript API, click enable. And again, this is something that only takes a few minutes. All right. And then make sure you go to uh, credentials or quotas rather, sorry. And where it says map loads per day, it needs to say unlimited and it will only say unlimited if you've attached a billing account to it. Um, otherwise it's going to say one and it's not going to work at all. Uh, you'll have issues with that. All right. So this, that setup is out of the way now. Um, so now I'll close this. And now that we have both of those added, let's go ahead. I'm going to hit control B. We're going to go to our maps.service file right here. All right. And in here, we're going to import the HTTP client because in this service file, we want to communicate with the IP API uh, service. So make things a little bit larger here. We're going to create an instance of the HTTP client, private HTTP, HTTP clients. All right. And then we're going to create a method called get location. You can make it get user data, whatever. Um, and we're going to return this.htp. We're going to get, and we're going to say, this is the endpoint. By the way, let me show you. All right. So uh, if you go here, this is going to be the service we're going to use in order to get the user's latitude and longitude in order to plot it on the Google Maps. Um, it gives you obviously a lot of other information. If we come here, uh, we'll go to API documentation. It's going to give you just a few different endpoints and what type of data it returns on the right side. Um, so if you want to get the location of a client's IP, we'll see that um, the, it, the address is right here. You can actually type this in and go to this address and it's going to tell you exactly, you know, what it's finding uh, for your result. All right. So um, we also have to have to pass along in a, um, an API key. So when you come here, you want to join or create a free account. Uh, so the free account gives you up to 30,000 requests per month or up to a thousand per day. All right. So, uh, it's a free plan. I signed up for it already and I, and I do not need to, um, I did not need to put any billing information. It asks for billing, uh, address information, but you don't actually put a card in, so you, you won't get charged. Uh, at least that's how I understand it. So, um, I already did that and already did the setup for that. Basically, literally once you create the account, it shows you the API key at the very next screen. So I'm not going to sit there and create another account. All right. So, um, the address for this, this is what it looks like right here for that endpoint. It's uh, API IP API.com forward slash API forward slash check. And then we're going to put in a URL parameter of access key equals. And then this is where your access key, your API key goes right here. So I'm not even going to, um, I, I have mine already. And so I'm just going to drag this over real quickly and just paste it after that equals. So you keep it all in that single quote. All right. And I'm going to save this and I'm going to go back out. All right. So literally that's where you paste it. It's right after the equal. All right. So, uh, now the maps.service is all set up. Um, now we'll go ahead and control B and we'll go to our app component TS file. 
And in there, we just want to import our maps service that we generated. All right. And then we'll get rid of this title here. And we're going to put in just a couple properties here. So uh, lat, we'll say is a type string and it'll be empty. I'll hit shift alt in the down arrow key. This is going to be LNG for long, for longitude rather, and that will be empty as well. And then also to store all of the data coming that's being returned from the API, we'll say location is just going to be an object. All right. And then in our constructor, we create an instance of our service. Private map is maps service. All right. And then ng on init lifecycle hood hook for when this component loads. We'll say this dot map, this is our service, and we define our get location. And we're going to subscribe. And inside of here, let's console log the data. All right. And then also we'll bind this dot lat to data dot latitude. And that's one of the properties are, that's passed by uh, it. So, and then this dot LNG for longitude is data dot longitude. Right now, ignore these errors right here. This is coming from TypeScript. I'll show you how to, how to fix this. Um, but for now, we'll just leave it there. It will still work after this. So let's save this and then go to our template, which is the final step. All right. And I'm just going to gut everything right here. And we'll put an H1 here. I, your information, I guess. And then we'll put in, and this is all specific to Angular or AGM or Angular Google Maps. You can look up the documentation. So uh, we have a custom uh, directive here, map. We're going to say um, latitude equals lat. And this is in reference to the properties that we named as being lat in LNG as well. Uh, and then also longitude equals LNG. Oh, come on, Gary, LNG. All right. And then inside of here, just one more line, AGM marker, because we are going to plot where this user is uh, located latitude equals lat. And then, okay, I'm going to stop being redundant here and just paste that in just like that. And that's it. So with any luck, uh, let's go back to the uh, console emulator that I have running here. All right, so let's see here. ng serve hyphen O for open. It'll open the browser at localhost 4200. Come on, let's go. Oh, that's great. Let's look at that. Control shift I, console. Hmm. Oh, well, there's the error. Okay. App latitude does not exist on type object. Okay. So before, uh, when I was setting up this project, I had ng serve running from the very beginning and it was still working even though I had those errors. But apparently if you're trying to run ng serve while those errors exist, uh, initially it's not going to build correctly. So what I'll do is show you, um, real quickly how, I fix that and that's by setting up an interface. So if I go back to here and we go back to our maps.service file, we're going to define a um, interface. And so I'm just going to call it location, put it right above our injectable decorator right here. So it's an interface location and uh, we're just going to accept a latitude and a longitude. So then right here, after the get statement, we put in location. And now if we save this and go back, these errors go away. All right. So now I, I hope to God it's going to work. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Uh, refresh. All right. Oh, there's one final step. Trust me, it works. And it's a, uh, it's one line of CSS. I, I was wrong when I said we didn't need any CSS. I, it's one rule set rather, and that's to set a height on the container here. So let me go back real quickly and we're going to go to our app component CSS 
it's just the AGM map here selector with a height of you know 300 pixels or whatever you want to set it to. Save that. We'll go back, and there we go. Also, we can see in the console log here, if you hit Control shift i go to console, this is all the data that uh, it contains. And you can see the, these are the properties that we uh, fetched, the latitude and the longitude right here. And as you can see, it's uh, the Google Maps is working, showing exactly where I live in the United States. It sucks here, don't live here. I'd rather live like somewhere down here or I don't I, I don't know about California. The taxes are way too high, maybe over here. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, yeah, that's it. So if you wanted access to any, any of this other stuff, then of course, you know how to reference it now. Uh, just going back right here to our app component. Uh, you set your properties up here, of course. This is all basic. Hopefully you, you know this already if you're you're looking into this stuff. If not, look at a develop, uh, a beginner Angular course. I just released one in Angular 7, by the way, just two days ago. Um, but yeah, and then you would bind it to, you know, data dot longitude. This is where all those, and latitude, this is where all those properties are coming from. And then you can display the data um, through interpolation. So let me just show you really quickly, just so there's no confusion. Let's say we wanted to display the country name in the title right here. All right. So let's create uh, real quickly. Uh, we'll say title of a, a type string. And there's nothing there now and we'll say this dot title equals data dot country and I already forget it I have the worst freaking memory country underscore name okay <laughs> Jesus Christ country underscore name like that um, and then we have to add that to the interface of course uh, so right there then we go back to our HTML and through interpolation, we say uh, country. Jesus, I, why can I not remember this stuff? Oh, I named it title. Oh, that's kind of stupid. All right. I'm not even drinking alcohol. I don't, I don't know what's going on with me. Um, there we go. United States just uh, outputting this stuff right here. So then in your user user interface for whatever you need this stuff, you can display it or you can use it for other things. There's a million different use cases for this. Uh, finding a person's zip code and tying into other APIs and doing other interesting things based on location. All right. So hopefully you found that useful. Again, remember to answer today's question, which is which database do you like the most? MySQL, MongoDB, et cetera, GouchDB, IndexedDB. There's so many other ones. Let me know what you think in the comments. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you with a new video very shortly. Goodbye.